Hey, everybody, welcome to um, my podcast. It's Ministry for the Now. Just wanted to chat to friends in ministry and uh, see what they're doing, where they're at in their context to help. Uh, to minister to the people within the community and what they feel called to and how they're doing that. And I know a lot is going to be of benefit. And so it's a privilege to have Andrew, um, who is married to Maria. You guys got two young kids, right? Yep. Oh, I can't forget if it's two or three. So I know I want to make that mistake, but two for now. Two for now. Two for now. Two for now. Yeah, we're just repopulating the church, you know, populating really? the earth. The original call of God on creation, right? Um, and uh, Andrew and Maria lead Journey Church in Ferenachan. And uh, I love, I must be honest, I really love the name um, and what you guys have done there. So, yeah, it's great to, to know you for the last couple of years, Andrew. And we haven't had, spent too much time together, but, um, but every time I do spend with you, you guys, it's been good. You know what I keep going back to is that... Um, that week, that, that those few days we went away to the, was it Strand? No, it wasn't Strand. It was Gordon's Bay. Gordon's Bay. Really, that was fantastic. I love that. I love just connecting with you. We, we must do, let's actually honestly do that again sometime. Um, even if it's in the high felt. I don't know. You guys might know some places. The first step's the hardest step, eh? We're just going to do it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> we'll just end it there. Um, yeah, Monday. good. Monday. <laughs> good good so andrew like um what i i've checked out the journey church but um what is a bit of the story behind the journey church like wh why the journey church what was the heart behind the name what was what was your guys kind of story like in setting up the journey church in forever because we we've like we've gone through um relaunching what was view church sunningdale mm. it has now become revived church and and that was a way bigger process, I think, than I ever thought possible or thought like in my mind how it would work. But what was your guys' journey at? Like, what was your story? How did you guys get in, into the journey, Church? Well, Sven, first of all, thanks for inviting me to be a part of today. And I've said it many times to you. I think you are gifted in doing this and it's just encouraging to see. And so, well done, man. So, so journey, Church, we were actually a church planted in February. 2012 and we were actually a campus very similar to your situation we were a campus out of what was at that time one way community church and we had great leadership visionary leadership and so the church was planted and two years in or Maria and i were really willing to assist the leading pastor at the time in 2014 he felt led he needed to move on and so it was an interesting year for maria and i 2014 we we really you know, where, where scripture says, if there's no vision, people cast off restraint. And so we were a little bit lost in the year thinking, where do we go? What are we doing? Do we move to the coast? Go hit the surf life. <laughs> we were really yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing in, wrong with that. Yeah. And, it's, and it was interesting because, I mean, from the point that Maria and I really got saved, we were heavily involved in church. We got married for eight years in between running our own businesses and serving the church. It was, it was quite a ride. So, so 2014, we, we took time. It was very interesting. Maria and I said, we're going to fast for a week and just say, God, what do you want? Not what do we want, God, what do you want? And uh, we finished the fast. Friday came, and I said to Maria, okay, you tell me first what God said to you. And she's like, no, you tell me. I said, no, you tell me. And it was synonymously God said to us, stay and build. That's all we got. And we knew exactly what that meant for us is that stay and build, that the church needs um, cons like constant leadership, uh, consistent leadership. So, so I think it was about the next week my, my senior pastor called and he said, hey, we need to just discuss 2015. And I said, don't worry, God's spoken. We're going to stay and build. And so that yes. really began the process of joining church. And uh, it was, I think, two and a half, three year transition that I our senior leader uh, took, you know, to get out of where he was. And so it was only in January 2019 that we relaunched as Journey Church. And so it was definitely a journey for us. And I think that that time uh, also in some ways led us to the name of, of Journey Church. And so we've had the privilege to be leading the church. Yeah, this would be our eighth year. Wow. And uh, it's just been... Such a privilege. I think it was Rick Warren. 
I stand to be corrected. It could have been him that said, you know, each year, if we do ministry right, it gets sweeter and sweeter. And, and I think for us, it, it's proven that ministry is slow. And, and just one step in front of the other each year really does prove to be something quite sweet. So, so we love it. We don't have a plan B. Um, we've got no other desire but to stay and build in Ferenichen. And, you know, our, our context is interesting. We, we do currently live in one of the worst-run municipalities in the country. And so it's challenging. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. The failing municipality, service delivery. Uh, it's, uh, it's, but I mean, that's where you've got to inspire more hope and you know, be the light. So, yeah, I, I, I like your attitude about that because I think, you know, we, we uh, sort of have this ideal place of where ministry must take place. But, you know, that's our plan. But I think God, God needs a voice. God needs an example god needs a witness in every part of the in every part of the country in every city around the world um and so when you've been called there god gives you a grace for there hey? um yes yes so i think it's great that you have that it's revelation you have that revelation i think i think even just what's what, what grabs me about that so much is that because you, you is that you had a revelation like a word from god willing to wait on god for a word that actually will change the trajectory of your life. Because like you're saying, you're looking at all these options, yeah. but I find when you bring something to God and you're willing to have a yielded spirit about it, he actually only gives you one option, right? It's, it's like, like when Paul says, I felt compelled. Like, I'm like, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm amazed here. that you guys are doing that. I, I love that. Um, and I think years ago, someone said, uh, I can't recall exactly who said it, but they said, you know, the safest place to be I mean, many South Africans think the safest, play would, safest place would be Australia or, or Britain. And he said, no, it's actually in the hand of God, in the will of God. And so, so whatever good. the location is, his will is the safest place to be. So, I mean, I could tell you for hours how God brought us or to this point, how God provided miraculously from where we're staying currently, from the vehicles we drive to God provided so that we could stay. It's been incredible. I love that. Well, what 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 are some of the? Do you have a story of like that you have there of, of just God's provision to help you to stay there? Well, I think one of the biggest ones is I mean our kids. There, there's limited schools in the area, uh, good ones that are English. Um, not judging any of the schools in the area, but um, for different reasons, Marie and I wanted our kids to be in a certain school, uh, and we were invited by the pastor of the school. Um, to, to, to have a bursary. And so our kids are wow. schooling with a discount. And we were staying in, in front of our park area just like 20 minutes outside of Frenichen. But we felt that we were pastoring from a distance. So we said, God, we want to move like into Frenichen area. Because um, when we got married, we moved just out there because the main campus was there. And uh, I think at that same time, Marie and I were, were in front of our park, but we said, no, we want to move to Frenichen. So where our church uh, was and is still renting, uh, I mailed the, the landlord and I said, look, the church is looking for a new piece of ground or a new building that we could rent. But uh, my wife and I, we're also looking for a spot. And so if you know of anything, let us know. And uh, I've never met the gentleman. I've only ever uh, heard of him at the time. We've since formed a relationship, a businessman in the area. But he, he said, you know what? I've just finished building uh, a townhouse complex with eight units and you can come check. And I think I mailed him the Friday, Saturday, he replied, and we met him the Monday morning. He took us there personally. He walked us through, and he said, Andrew, the, the townhouses go for this much, but you can have it for half price. What? <laughs> and and standing in the unit, I said, to him, I said to him, Gary, I said, Gary, like, why? Why would you do that? He says, well, I, I know you're doing the Lord's work. And I mean, he's a stranger. I didn't, I didn't know him. And I mean, Amazing. we've been renting there today five years off price. So I know what my neighbors do. <laughs> but that, I think that's so cool. That's the hand of God when, when he's called you to a place. Hey? That's, in, that's amazing. And I think even just your Nothing story, really like, cool. hey, yeah. Now I was going to say in, in 2017, um, it was interesting. A, a gentleman in the church, is, he's very generous. He arrived and I thought he does a lot of printing for our church. Uh, banners, all these things, and he arrived and he 
He said, hey, can I see you Thursday? He said, yeah, sure. So arrived, I thought, okay, well, is this a pastoral concern? Is there something wrong? Are you dropping off a print that I don't know about? And he said, eventually, long story short, he said, him and his wife um, linked to a message that I preached a week or two earlier. He said, they just felt led that they want to give us a car. And they gifted us a small little car. And it was just such a blessing to to have a second awesome. vehicle that we could do running yeah. around for work and kids and everything. So that, that is was amazing. Just big provision. That's amazing. And it was interesting. In 2014, we, we had a guest speaker at our church um, from a, an AOG church in, in Britain. Lee Goodwin, that was his name. Uh, we had finished a service and I was talking to our, our senior pastor's wife and he was there and we were just talking and out of nowhere, Maria, my wife, just comes and stands next to us and I think she asked him to pray for us and I thought, okay, well, we didn't discuss this, but anyway, I'm not going to deny prayer and, and he began to pray for us and he eventually, um, he just gave us a word and he said, you know what, God's going to lead you to um, in sync that what he says to you is going to say to you. And wow. he said, God's also going to lead you by provision. Now, Amen. that was in 2014. And so at the same time, when God said to us, stay and build, we knew it was the first time he spoke to us both. The same wow. thing. And then he's continuously just led us through provision. So we've seen that word come to pass. Wow. Well, how would you, how would you encourage? Because yeah. obviously you've got that story now about you and Maria. How do you encourage people in your church with having to navigate that process of seeking God about a decision or what, what do you tell them? You know, and I think that's the power of testimony. I felt time and time again, when, when I just say what God's done for me, it stirs within them that faith to say, look, if, if God's done it for him, he can do it for me. And I often tell the church, I say, Hey, listen, God didn't do that because I'm a pastor. Yeah. So God did that because I'm a son that trusts him. <laughs> yeah. So good. If he's done it for me, he can do it for you. Yeah. Good. Good. I think people do get confused. They're like, oh, no, pastors, they're just on another level. Like they do, they've got that red telephone in the office and they just make the call to God and things happen. But um, it is available for all of us. So. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, like, even part of your journey, like you were, you were serving with the church. But you were still running a company at the time, right? Because you, am I right? Yeah. So, and you and your wife were both yeah, designers. So and I both qualified. Graphic designers, we both qualified. And so the year we got married, we got married in March 2010. In June, I lost my job as a junior designer. And so we thought, hey, well, a few months into marriage, why don't we just launch a business? <laughs> wow. So that began a journey for us. Maria, we got married. She was in her final year of studies. Um, we were youth leaders in some capacity at the time, so it was a that was a rocky road for a few years, and uh, yeah, you know, it was eventually 2018. We went full time. We we let the businesses go. I think it was just a matter of the church was growing, business was going quiet. Yeah, um, God spoke to us clearly then as well, and so we just knew that full time ministry for us was a matter of you know, it was not if but when. And yeah. So when yeah. it eventually happened, it was no surprise. It was actually exciting. We're like, yes, the day has come. We can go full time. So yeah. it wasn't like a quick tearing of the us. So do you have a do you have a pet peeve when it comes to designs within your church, or you guys obviously designing everything? I don't know how. I like I don't know because sometimes you have an area of of capability that's so good. Nobody else can get involved there because of because of your expertise, um, or your your like it's a, a big hobby. And so, like, how do you navigate? How do you navigate that? Or do you just be like, it's fine. Like, that's the that's the bonus of bringing the gift of design to the church now is that we don't have to deal with difficult clients. We we just get to do what we want to do. <laughs> but I think you always live with that frustration. I mean, you're always evaluating colors and fonts and sizes, and so. No, if that's your world, it is true. But I think we've oh, gratefully just saved the church thousands of brands by just being willing to to pick that up as well. And so for sure, and hopefully I you're refreshed by it. All of us. Yeah, no, I was going to say all of us just have more to bring to the church than what we think. So it's not. Yeah, you know, we know the church is not built on the gifts and talents of a few, but on the sacrifices of many. So. Just bringing out heavy quotes. Uh, 
that's good that's good but now with design uh, specifically for the church is there i mean what are you hoping to accomplish with because obviously coming with a certain background and still being being competent in it and good at it and you bring that gift to the church what are you hoping for that gift to bring out in the church i mean i mean there's the story is like you left a full-time employment you got involved in ministry which is huge and god spoke but now that you're in that what are you hoping that design will achieve for you guys well i think i don't want to say we would like to make a church look professional it's not the right word but i think really just in whatever way we can just helping the church of god be excellent great um, attractive um yeah, so so I think if we can bring that to to help the church, yeah, then then let's do it. Let's no, I think it's yeah. great. It's good. It's good because church at some point, I think in every generation, the church has to do an audit and go. We don't look like the world in the way that we live, but we ought to be able to speak to the world in such a way, like or or, or love the world, or to. Um, help people to feel comfortable when, and that's got a lot to do with relationships. Sure. But I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't go, I don't go into places that look, if a place doesn't look good, I'm pro probably not going in. If that's a store or whatever, it's got nothing to do with church. So I think for us to be um, on the edge of what God wants to do, we need to be a place where people can step into with some level of comfort and go, okay, cool. Let me see what's happening here. Um, and I feel like that's, yeah, I think the, the, the value of excellence communicates value. So exactly. I think if anyone arrives at a church that is putting the time and the money and the effort to, to make things look good, it tells them you matter and that we're serious good. about what we're doing and that it's, you know, it's, it's eternal, it's not temporal. And so, yeah, it's, I don't think there's anything wrong in, in making the kingdom attractive. Uh, and again, yeah. it's not there's there's not a worldliness to it. Like creativity is a gift, not a curse. And so, God, I mean, if you think how the, the temple was decorated with ornaments, and people were given what's his name, Bezalel, I think his name was, that was given yeah. creative ability to to make things awesome. So I'm like, come on, God hasn't changed. He still wants that to come through the church today in some way or form. I mean, that's yeah. from a worship experience to lighting. Um, yeah, I, I remember when, like, when I got, uh, when I started going to church, you know, it was in that, in that sort of like a worship, like surge, like that was in the days of, um, you know, Hillsong, Hillsong United, Hillsong, like all of those cools. And then there was like stages started looking all colorful and lighting. And I love that. I mean, yeah. I love, I love creativity on the stage. I love I love all the big and bold lighting. I mean, if if you're struggling to breathe because the haze is so thick, that's probably appropriate. You know, I, like I, that's where I go to, and I actually find these days people are put yeah people are pushing in the other extreme of like no 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 it's got to be like holy and reverent. But I'm like, you know, there's lots of color in the kingdom. There's lots of lots of creative expression, and I think what we must just make sure what we're doing is that we're staying in touch where everybody the world knows like sort of how things are being communicated you know if we're mm -hmm. you, you don't go to any any um conference venue in the world and it's like every, everything's super bright and stark that makes you feel uncomfortable like there's a mood yeah. there's an atmosphere and what I, what I love about what you're saying there is that it shows value and intentionality to people to say hey we've thought about you we're thinking about you we want you to have a great experience here whatever you believe um which takes me on to your, your, your vision um, statement here, which is uh, to, to see people believe in God, belong to his family, become his disciples, and build his church. Mm -hmm. Now, I love that because it's obviously very structured. Uh, it sounds like there's process there. But what, what was the heart for that for you and Maria? Like, why that phrase? Well, this, it was adapted from something similar, but we really had to let it sift through us so that we could grasp it before we just put it on paper so there's definitely meaning behind all of that and so our 
that actually forms part of our mission statement the, to help people believe in God, belong to his family, become his disciples, build his church. Mm. Our, our vision is actually, we, we've said, to see multitudes of people reach their God-given destiny. So that's linked wow. to Ephesians 2.10, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance to do. So God is a God of destiny. What is destiny? Uh, reaching God's plans for your life. And so it's definitely not here. It's there. And, and we've said the, the journey is not A to B. Okay. The journey is ongoing, that, that yeah. you actually never arrive, that your believing in God only increases and yeah. growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the belong, belong community is just layered. You just get more and more involved in community. Um, becoming a disciple, whoever arrives, <laughs> It's you just become a more devout, firmer, um, more passionate disciple. And then yeah. the building factors that then you essentially give your life to God, the church, the kingdom, and, and you add value. And so what does that look like? Good. You bring your gift, you sacrifice your time, your talent, your treasure. And so, and, and all of us find ourselves at different points on that journey, but we say wherever you are, it's okay. Anywhere but backwards. That's what we say. Anywhere but backwards. I love that. I love that. I love that. Anywhere but backwards, I think, is, is quite right. Stumbling forward is fine. Hey, there we go. That's good. And so, so I mean, um, that, that believe, belong, become bull, um, we even incorporated into our design. And so, okay. if, if anyone were able to look, um, there's the J for journey in our logo. And it's got a little arrow which kind of points to like the horizon, like you would be on a journey. It's in a circle as okay. you keep going, and it's four parts that, that form the icon, which is believe, belong, become built. So we were very intentional. You said that's it. amazing. <laughs> I geek out on stuff like that. I think that's incredible. The tiny nuances and the – because then there's a story behind it. I love it. But what no. are you guys – doing like um, we, we we can geek out on that because I, I, I dig that design stuff but um what are you guys doing in your church to help people to travel along because obviously there's your intention is to get people to the build part even mm -hmm. though everything is circular and everything is always we're developing all the time but is there like how, how are you helping people to get through that now what does that look like on the ground yeah so I think this verse is a motivator, I would say for us, but probably more for me from Colossians 1.28, where Paul writes and he says, He, Jesus, is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with wisdom. And he says this, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And he says, to this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me so so it's just that we want to take people from here to there it's it's maturing that's what beliefs yeah. to build really represents so i think that takes on different forms from from midweek meetings where we can host different courses to to serve people where they're at whether it's financial relational whether it's partnership and saying hey you need to take ownership of a local church at some stage and so if it's mm -hmm. journey this is who we are and I think most of us do partnership or membership courses like that. Um, I think a big one for us, like it is for most churches, is Sunday is our starting point. And sure. so on Sundays, you, you, through what's preached, you'll, you'll be helped in your believing. We want to encourage community, don't rush home, stay 10 minutes after, come 10 minutes early, connect, talk to someone, belong to a family. We would say church is more than a Sunday. Church is more than a sermon. Church is more than a few songs. Yeah. And so we, we, but Sundays are important. It's a starting point for most of us. So we put a yeah. lot of effort on, on Sundays and, and kids' ministry. And yeah, then it's obviously through to generational youth, kids. Yes. Yeah, you know, high school. And, and just, so you've got, you've got all these, these kind of, no, go, I'm, I'm interrupting. Sorry. No, please. I mean, it's, I think it's just, it's a lot of experimenting, eh? Um, let's do this. Let's try yeah. that. And, and some things work, and then we pull back, and then we try something else that's evolving all the time. And we've also figured out, well, that's not us. Um, it may work for them, but
but it doesn't seem to be working for us. So let's pull the plug and let's be authentic. Let's let's do what we know works for us. Good, so, good. I love yeah. that 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 experimentation because things do evolve over time, and and I think it's quite okay to try something and have it not work out. It doesn't mean like you haven't heard from God or what, like I think God gives us a hey go in this direction and He leads us along the way, but He doesn't like lay down a like a map and go okay now you do everything here like it's got to be experimentation and and that i'm uh, like encouraged to hear that i'm not the only one who you know tries things things you know, tweak it can it try it again you know uh I, i've got I'm very much, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i've got to be careful because i like I, i'm like a squirrel i always want to start something new and i got to like focus and sit down and see things through um I think it's just the value of team, mm -hmm. but um, for you, how have you seen, even just coming out of, I don't want to have the COVID conversation, but how, how, how have you seen things within specifically Sundays now um, change or have they changed at all sort of post COVID era for you? Cause I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, like the, the way that we were building church before COVID to how we've, but how we're building church after COVID is actually for us has changed in a few significant ways, but um, I'm very keen to hear your, what's happening with your guys world. So we've seen, we are only now just about recovered back to where we were post uh, pre COVID. So like a month before COVID, we had had the best momentum in the life of the church. Sundays were great, high energy, good attendance. That thing happened, and uh, we've only now recovered. So beginning of the year, we were saying, man, we're growing. I said, no, we're not growing. We're just recovering, guys. Catching and up. So yeah. I think, yeah, so I think what we've seen is uh, definitely what many pastors are saying is a complete new congregation. And so we, we found that our partnership class is definitely larger than normal, Um We've even done things like uh, meet and greet. So we've said, hey, if you've been attending church for the last three or six months and we don't know you, we want to know you. And so after service, we'll just have a 30 minute with a group of people. They get to meet staff, the elders, some of the leaders. And, and the other day we sat with, I think we were about 30 people in a room. No one knew anyone, but everyone had been impacted. We're like, none of you were here before COVID. Amazing. <laughs> and, and so it's like a, a new hunger. And I think that's really what we've seen happen. Um, I think our, our team that were involved serving on the ground um, before COVID and during COVID are definitely the ones that are still around. All churches saw a bit of a fall off, but those were mainly people sitting on the fringes. Unfortunately, those who were not in community, those who didn't belong in some way, um, who just relied on Sundays. Hmm. sermons songs yeah unfortunately yeah we don't see many of them so yeah the shaking was good so have you have you guys adopted or adapted your approach um, as a result or have you just kept on kind of going you know, when I, i'd be honest i think there was talks and I think I felt the pressure to say like, we've got to do church in a whole new way coming back. And I think time's proven that what we did wasn't wrong. Mm. And uh, we've just kept doing it and kept doing it excellently, consistently, and it's proving to be fruitful. So I'm not going to change what looks to be working, but definitely open to, to new ideas because I think for me, I'm in the corner thinking, well, I don't know what else to do differently because <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't have that like moment. The light bulb's gone on. This is the secret to church. Yeah, I, what I love about hearing from different people among the body of Christ is I think there are principles and I think you guys are sticking to principles that are kingdom principles and they bear kingdom results um but the, one of the mm. one of those things is that churches all around the world they do things differently so there's no right i don't think there's any one right way i think the world is a kaleidoscope and the church needs to reflect that in a sense of 
there's so many different types of churches because there are so many different types of people. And I think what it comes down to is, God, are we building what you called us to build and the way that you've called us to build it? And then sticking with that. And I think, I think having that ability to say no to something is as important as the ability to say yes to something else, you know? Yeah. Um, it's that it's that clarity of like this is the plan we're gonna stick with it. Um, of course, you want to be open to new ideas. You want to be open to new ways because you don't want to get like my my fear is that we get stuck doing church the the way that previous generations have also gotten stuck. I always want to be involving, but um, but I think there's a real beauty to being a no no. This is what we're doing. We're saying no to maybe what looks shiny. Yeah, we're gonna stick to to what we know is working, and I think that's great. Um, kind of last last thing to to ask you here is what's what's kind of burning on the inside um for you in this season like what like what wh- what's burning for you for your for your city for your congregation mm-hmm. like is god maybe like impressing something in this season in your heart in your in you and maria's life and heart um to connect more people to reach more people to build more people to a lot get more people like i don't know i don't know if i'm saying that right but um um i think for me what i'm wrestling with at this stage from a leadership perspective i think something that's that's floating for me is that and let me speak for journey church let me not assume that it's everyone's um, situation but i think in our church um and maybe it's something that we've modeled maybe it's our channels but um I think we're very good at, at teaching Christians to serve, but not to minister. Wow. And how I've seen this, I mean, to do the job is easy, but to pray for someone, to, to 1 Corinthians 14, trust God to be prophetic, to strengthen, comfort, and encourage others, that's a whole nother expectation from someone. So how, yeah, okay, join the cafe team. All right, cool. Here's the kettle, push the button, pour in this cup, pour that milk. Okay, easy. Okay. We want you to come to a prayer and worship night. You're going to be a prayer partner and uh, just be, just be led by the spirit that you can give someone a word in season. So I think we journey church are learning to do better at ministering and more people just than me or two or an elder or my wife or mm. team leaders that that more people can learn to minister because I think that's where we could be effective on a whole new level. So I think there's there's more risk in teaching and trusting people to minister than to serve. Yeah, because obviously with your serving, you've got defined roles and how this will work and the kind of person. So it's like a very much... A, a very much task driven, even on the relational side, there's a way to do it. And on the ministry side, you probably have a little bit more, it's more nuanced, right? It depends on the situation. It depends on the circumstance, depends on, so how are you, so how are you planning or desiring to train people to minister and not just, so, I mean, you know, we say minister and serve, they're the same thing in a sense, but, but I understand you're, you're nuancing it a, a, a bit more from task, but okay, now I hear from God and do what He's telling you to do in a situation. Is there a way that you're training? Yes, I think people? it's differentiating between the, the tangible side of serving and then the spiritual side of it. Although yeah. all of it is spiritual in a sense, um, yeah. So I think it's got to be both. There's got to be yeah. some sort of training, but also some sort of just trust God. So yeah. Um, for, for anyone listening, I mean, we were at our group conference recently, and, and during one of the sessions, um, I was just open to God saying, God, what are you saying for us, for Journey Church? And the two words just dropped in my mind, worship nights. So I thought, okay, what about worship nights, God? And he didn't say anything else. So I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to jump to it, because we are, at, at this stage, we've got two morning services that are identical, they're quite full, so we are playing with the idea of a third service. And so I thought third service, winter, good idea. Should we, shouldn't we? 
Do we do a morning? Do we do an evening? So when God said to me, worship nights at our group conference, I thought, well, let's not launch a third service, but mm. let's, let's launch a space. And so what we did, it's only a couple of weeks ago, is we said, look, for the whole of winter, June, July, we're going to be having worship nights at church for one hour, half past five to half past six. Just come, sit at the feet of Jesus. Nobody but the four staff members will be serving. You've got to do nothing but be with Jesus, listen to him, sing, pray. And we've said that space has got a function, but not a lot of form. So we're yeah. not going to run sheep this time and then this and then that. We just said, let's just fill this thing out. We're not going to be weird in any way. And so I also wanted to be stri- strategic in that space in, in helping people minister. So we said, come on, guys. Scripture says desire the greater gift of, of prophecy. So it's not to say you have to be a prophet, but you can mm. prophesy, which is strength Good. and comfort and encourage the church. Um, he who prophesies is greater than the one who prays in tongues because he edifies himself. So, so on the evenings... Um, most of them, I'd say, I knew who would be our prayer partners, so they would get a tag, so come pray time. If you need prayer, come forward, find a prayer partner, they'll pray for you. Um, but some of those prayer partners would arrive to enjoy the evening, and then I'd hand them a tag. I said, hey, would you be a prayer partner tonight? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's, there's deep end learning that has to take place as well, because, and none of those are strangers, but people in our church that I feel I can trust in this space, through conversations that we've had, but we didn't have a call and say, hey, will you be a prayer partner? This is what you must say. This is what you must do. It's just, come on, let, let God's spirit lead you here. So there's function, but not a lot of form. So we're hoping that this space does something. Perhaps it will become a third service. I don't know. I love that, Andrew. That's that's having the guts to be obedient to God, to be open to Him, to let Him direct i think it's innovative in a sense of it's a very different space to to what you would normally have um and i think what an what a what a place for people to be to start being courageous in their own faith like calling people out like that i think oh man sometimes you sometimes yes you need to like walk someone from the shallow end to the deep end i get that but every now and then you do need to give people a bit of a hey you know it's you and jesus figure this out kind of moment and and as great as that it's still a safe environment because you're still there and there's a you've you've set Mm -hmm. like boundaries on it and um i actually think that sounds really really cool Uh, i i love that it's You've not tried to replicate something, but you're just giving space, even your language around it. What did you say? It's got a function, but not a form. Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, what I love about that as well is that it's giving people ownership and the courage and the, the, the training ground to be able to pray mm-hmm. for other people and minister to other people. Uh, I think that one, if you don't yeah. mind, I might lock that in the old vault up here and... Um, and keep a, keep a so mind on that. To, to give you a testament on that, there's a there's a gentleman in our church. He's I think in his early sixties, and for years him and I've had conversations, and and he's convinced, and I'm I believe him that he's got the gift of healing, and so he's shared stories that are credible, and uh, I've often considered him when there's a sick person, I, I bring him in and say, hey, I think he's got the gift, so so let's just trust God because these things. Yeah. They are still real. And um, two weeks ago, um, after the prayer night, he was there. He loves the space. And he just came alive. He was just like, he said, you know, this has just brought energy to his faith and this getting to pray for people. And he's like, and I just love to see what that space offered him. Um, Amazing. And so that's that's nurturing ministers or ministry. Mm. Um, Amazing. Well done. You guys are doing fantastic. Well done. Well done for that. I'm encouraged and, and actually inspired by uh, by that on, on quite a big level because ministry was never meant to be held on by a few, but is meant to be given away to as many people as possible. And I think you guys are doing that. Yeah, well I must done. say this, Ken, that uh, I'm one for control. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I 
you that. But I think years ago, I was impacted by a, a quote by Craig Rochelle. He said, you can have control or growth, but you can't have both. Oh. So, yeah, yes, there's going to be a level of control, but also at some point, oh, just let it go, man. And, mm. and the letting go is actually, can actually bring the growth that you think control will bring, but it doesn't. Listen, I'm not a control freak. Everyone just does what I say. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, real problems, eh? real things. But that's a good, that, I mean, that's, that's a powerful statement. Um, Andrew, thanks so much, man. You and Maria, honestly, are doing a fantastic job, fantastic work. And um, nice to I, I follow you guys and um, chat to you guys. And yeah, I'm just deeply encouraged by your willingness to be obedient to God, to hear from direction for God bringing excellence into into the body of Christ and yeah building his church in Ferenachan you know and um yeah I pray that it continues to grow from strength to strength and glory to glory and may the dreams that God has given to you guys in the secret place of your heart I pray that you will live to see those fulfilled and be able to pass them on to a future generation um there's a there's a psalm that I got during covid which was um i can't remember the exact location of it but the psalmist was writing surely i will see the goodness of god in the land of the living so actually see what god has done in your lifetime and yeah man i look forward to chatting to you again soon well Swin, thank you and i mean you guys laura revive team it's also good to see this grace there and so one foot in front of the other we learn Amen. from you guys as well Amen. Love you intentionality. I beg your pardon? I love your intentionality in ministry as well. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we're doing what we can, eh? <laughs> We've got to keep going.